beautiful puppy. You look beautiful, girl. You look beautiful as always. Thank Hello, you. everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. We're a few days late with this video, but both Sarah and I have had some stuff going on. So we're finally able to sit down and look at our August reading. You guys obviously know who Sarah is, but if you are just now joining us, this is your first time watching. Thank you for being here. But let me go ahead and show you Sarah's channel which will be down all the links will be down in the description box below you guys um and so she does these awesome tea leaf readings she does like little readings here and there it's pretty cool um what she's able to do we've seen all the tarot cards we've seen everything else but, be, but being able to see some tea leaf reading and some um interpersonal look through a different form a different skill set is always much appreciated and so her a link to her website i'll put that in the description box as well but it's also on her youtube channel so if you guys would like to have a further reading with sarah a private reading with sarah um then please go ahead and do that so sarah how you doing today girl good now thank you july was kind of insane um just kind of medical delays nothing majorly huge at all but just enough that made delay that caused me to delay everything so if anyone does go to my youtube channel thank you very much um yeah i'll, I'll be uploading the new videos soon i just i literally couldn't speak very well i had a bit of a jaw thing so throat chakra work <laughs> uh, these human bodies man <laughs> I often refer to our lives as like an amusement park and every life we just pick a different ride to go on. And I keep saying, I think we collectively pick the haunted house for this <laughs> life. Yeah, next, I, life I agree. next life, the I, Lazy River. <laughs> let's just pick the hardest one, the most weirdest one. Oh, that's, that sounds like fun just do that one so anyway guys well we're gonna be doing like a 20 just a 20 minute look today um because both sarah and i have been a little under the weather so just a 20 minute look today at august and of course i just want to reiterate to you guys this is a general collective reading and so not everything has to resonate with you there might be just one message there for you it might be the whole story that resonates with you so take what resonates because because spirit is talking to everybody collectively right now and again if you want a personal look with Sarah I've had a personal tea leaf reading with Sarah you can contact her and book it privately so she can specifically look at you um and yeah is there anything you want to add to that Sarah um only that it's always as to reiterate what you so beautifully just said it's always for entertainment purposes only it's always take what you will and like you said leave what you don't it's not meant these general readings like you said they're for collective they are for the collective it's not going to be accurate for everyone every single time and that's perfectly fine it may not resonate with you at all and if that's the case that's totally fine and maybe next month it would be different or maybe a previous one if that would be different but we always get, in my opinion, we always get what we need when we need it. So. Yeah, and and yeah, and sometimes no news is good news. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh, there's nothing in there. Oh, that's a good day. Spirit's like, it's fine. Just relax. You're good this well, month. Wait till next month, though. Just wait till next month. One time I did a tea leaf reading for myself when I was like first starting, and I did it like a self practice session, and there was like literally nothing in the sides. All the leaves were in the bot base. Nothing. And, like they didn't. I mean, it didn't come out. I'm like okay, I guess I'm not supposed to know what's coming up. Okay, that's fine. All right, spirit. I'll see you. We, we like a sassy spirit on this channel. We like a sassy spirit. So I'm just getting the leaves ready right now. And as she's doing that, guys, as she's prepping the leaves, I do want to um, let you guys know I post this on my community tab. tab. This is going to be airing on Tuesday. We are filming this Monday afternoon. Monday, August 7th, but it will be aired Tuesday morning, August 8th, which is the Lionsgate portal. Um, and the typical, our typical Tuesday Octurian reading will not be aired this week. It'll be aired again next week because this week I've got a whole slew of really awesome guests coming on, including Sarah, of course, but oh. there's some surprise guests at the end of the week, some pretty big people coming on. And so it's going to be a little bit of a different week for our channel, which is awesome. But next week we'll get back to the Octurian um, anthology. So with that being said, Sarah, I'm just going to put the camera on you girl and let you just, do you want me to let you know when it's been like 10 minutes halfway mark? Yes, please. Okay, cool. Awesome. I'm going to put the camera on you lady and let you just do it girl. Okay, awesome. 
I'm just collecting any residual liquid that's coming out of the cup right now. That's just something that I like to do. I developed that idea over the years or came to me divinely over the years, just because if I don't liquid pools in the base, it will change the images, may change the images in the base, just fine. I just this doing this prevents me from, you know, this. Hey, I can talk. This prevents the images from changing shape. There we go. I said it, got it out. <laughs> okay. But yes, if you can please let me know halfway through, that would be awesome. Thank you. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. This is going to be a, busy month now even though this is for the month of august this is in my mind partly partially retroactive because we are doing this on august the 7th i'm set the intention that this is for august like for the whole month of august so the beginning i read chronologically is a quick reminder for anyone who hasn't joining maybe joining for the first time i read chronologically that's just how i myself do it the rim is the present situation the sides are on the way bases is, is the more distant future so it's like now on the way and later so in our case for August, this is the beginning of the month. And then as the month progresses, that's on the sides. And then the base is like the end of the month heading into September. I can't believe I'm saying that already. September, it's kind of wild, but yes. So it's gonna be a little bit retroactive near the beginning of the reading. And then as we go down in very short order, it's gonna be looking forward into the month. Okay. Just make sure my wing light's turned up here. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's start. So looking at the rim, which is the like August 1st. I go quiet sometimes. Looks as though the beginning of this month for the most part began fairly with one main event or situation that was prevalent, whatever that may have been. Um, and it was pretty well across the board. It was one main event or situation taking place that where we may have felt things were calm and clear and, cl calm and, clear and quiet and we were happy with that and or we want things to get moving a little bit more. Now, aside from that, there was like the one smaller situation and one much smaller or and much less significant situation that was taking place. However, after that, everything began to happen very quickly. <laughs> okay, doing a quick over. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So, if anyone wants to look in the leaves, this is what I'm looking at here. So, this is the main event or situation. Usually, there's like one line. This is like the main hub, the main focus of the reading. This is the main uh, information that's being discussed. We also have a secondary event or situation, which is over here. So this was something obviously that was taking place at the beginning of the month, maybe even happening right now. But if it was happening right now, I would say it's just beginning to conclude. Separate in and of itself, but also just taking place at the same time as this main event or situation also was occurring. Okay, that's interesting. I'll look at the main event first because there's a lot involved with this. This event begins, you know, it's fairly significant and it gains in significance as the month progresses. It gets like even bigger. It's like a snowball for those of us in the north who get snow <laughs> or saying castle. I don't know. It gets bigger and bigger, and bigger. The more the month progresses, it gets more larger and larger and larger. Um, okay. It also has like one main section or one main part or one main aspect of it where there is a lot of clarity. And at the same time, like it's a, a situation where we know, but we don't know. It's like we got a letter. We know we're going to college, but we don't know all of the details of when, how, what books, what teachers, supplies, that kind of scenario. Aside from that area, there's also a fair amount of thinking and talking things up in the air. Things needed to, needed to be decided, conversations, things along those lines. I would say it's almost a 50-50 in terms of a lot of thinking and discussions. And also knowing where we stand, having surprises, and yet also having clarity and a very nice mix of both of them, actually. So like there's like three, essentially three different parts to this.
It looks like he began with a very small new opportunity that was being presented that involved um, a document of some kind, paperwork, further learning, things of that nature, documents, and also some kind of new beginning that that presented. It was very small, insignificant in and of itself, but it's, it's present. Also had to do with thinking and talking and using your intellect. There's a new beginning. Possibly also reassurance is part of that as well. And that helped to lead to unconventional stability, a smaller event. And like these all precede this main event taking place. That also definitely began became, I would say, a new beginning as well. Like, oh, here's an idea for an opportunity. Okay, it's starting here. It's this concept of a new idea, this intellect, this change. It's the same symbol I'm seeing in the same area. <coughs> Excuse me, twice. With learning, furthering your knowledge, paperwork, contracts, things along those lines. Okay. There's a lot of leaves in here. Okay, let's see. There's a helpful individual that's being shown near the beginning of this main event. Forward movement, forward movement with that individual was is being indicated. Also someone with a prominent nose and messages like communication arriving regarding that individual, likely in some way, shape or form, as well as stability. Letter M, harmonious, possibly quite a harmonious situation. Partnership forming beautifully regarding that. Yeah, and again, it's, it's, it's this whole concept of moving forward, not being held back. Things are progressing well. That was part of a scenario that involved abundance and prosperity and reassurance as well. It's almost like setting your intention and really being aware of it and saying, okay, this is a dream. This is something that I would like to have, like manifesting. Like, this is something that I would like to have and just being open to dreaming and just going for it, essentially. Um, this also may be something to do with spirituality, a spiritual practice, someone who is very wise, someone who's maybe even a fire sign, something along those lines. There's a significance uh, around, hmm, yeah, it's, it's this new idea, new idea that's being presented. Creativity near the beginning of the month, making new things, new creative projects. It's a cute little bunny. So. Again, we had abundance and prosperity beginning at the beginning, beginning at the beginning of the month. It was forming beautifully. And that helped to result in um, a new opportunity that was being shown. Messages, news, and or information was arriving regarding that specifically. And it may have involved travel or may involve travel in some way. Again, it all has to do with creativity, creating new things, new creative projects. A reminder that the angels, divine guidance is around us at all times, in my opinion. Always ask for and receive divine help. But it's this freedom of movement, not feeling held back, really just going for what you want to have. In different scenarios. I've seen it twice now. Yeah, we have a beautiful little happy face, a cheeky little happy face. So things looks like looks like things are going fairly well. I'm sort of looking in the area now where there was more thinking and conversations. And yeah, it's, it looked very positive, quite lighthearted. There may have been an Aries or a Taurus connection. And again, this concept of maybe even a Cancerian connection. I'm no astrologer or neurologist, but maybe the sense of like home and or family, something along those lines, healing and emotions. And also this idea of change, transformation, going for what you want to have intellect as well potentially as well that helped to result in a small um, conclusion nothing too significant but but present that was involved with stability so stability led to this new conclusion and it looked to be a positive scenario things moving along quite nicely there Yeah. 
generally speaking, that area where there was a lot of conversations and things up in the air looks very positive. Yeah. A lot of, uh, much of the same, a lot of happy faces, a lot of stability too. So even though things maybe have been up in the air or may still yet be up in the air for most of this month in pertain as pertains to this main scenario, there's stability in it too. And you're at the half halfway point. Awesome. Thank you. Because I'm almost at the halfway point here now too. <laughs> awesome. Thank Good. You. Perfect. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Okay, so in the area where there are a lot of um, unknowns and surprises and also clarity, there's also the number four, which for me means stability in the angels. Someone watching may have a different meaning that have, may have a different meaning. If so, that's wonderful. There's also the letter W, person, place, or thing. Also have, um, they also have a letter V and that Aries and or Taurus connection. Again, it's the sense of going within. I keep seeing books. I keep seeing it. So there's this um, a, a girl who is kneeling, holding a book. For me, that means like yoga, meditation, shadow work, going within, reading, whatever the case is. But it's this whole self-connection, self-going within, self-care. And that's related to the letter W and a partnership. And that involves another, also involves another female. I'm not reading for anyone else is the whole ethics thing. I'm not reading for anyone else. This I'm just saying that these are people appearing in the leaves. Okay, going down a bit further. Letter E, person, place, or thing is involved, and the letters N and W. Working with multiple people. I would say this month so far from what I'm seeing, it's a really great time of self-reflection, going within, self-connection, self-awareness. Taking, or as I say, often say, taking time out for your own self-care, our own self-care. Yeah, and this open communication I keep seeing. Okay. Yeah, looks good, just going down further. I keep seeing it, going within, being aware of this whole self-awareness conversation continues as the month progresses. Letter A, person, place, or thing that is connected with abundance and prosperity. It is beautifully forming. That involves one individual, likely a male, and later on a female with a letter um, E in her name. And that's also re related to the letter A that I have seen just a moment ago. Again, a reminder that the angels are around us. Can ask them for help should you wish to, in an opinion. Um, and also a sense of triumph. So around the middle of the month, we it's like we're feeling good. It's like, yes, something really good, great has happened. Nurturing, self-nurturing, self-care. Change, transformation. It's like there's a lovely change that's taking place. And it's, it's at this moment in time, beautifully forming, beautifully taking place, taking shape right now. And that involves working with many people. To going for what you want to have. Someone may be thinking of moving around the middle of the month or so. If so, it looks like it's very positive. It's forming very nicely. This is all part of another situation that involves um, like a self-independence as well as, as, well as a, an abundance and prosperity as well at the same time. Creativity, going for what you want to have, new creative projects, a lot of surprises going for what you want to have not feeling held back that seems to be like the the two themes it's this going within learning and feeling yeah, it's so interesting i keep seeing them going on further yeah. feeling good looks like we're feeling fairly well i mean if there may be some temporary setbacks i think that's normal in life anyway but I would say, if anything, it's a very small reminder for perspective. I think we'll be so busy <laughs> with everything else from what I'm seeing in here. We're not going to be really dwelling on anything negative anyway. Uh, anyway. We're just going to keep going because there's a lot of things happening in this one scenario anyway. A lot of helpful people. I'm also seeing a couple lion faces too. Obviously, we're on the sign of Leo, so that makes sense. Letter E, person, place, or thing. Again, this forward movement, going for what you want to have, not being held back. A reminder that um, we have divine protection around us at all times. Protection. 
possible additions to the family and or money taking place near the end of this month. And that has to do with an idea, two ideas, and an opportunity that is connected with that scenario in abundance as well. There may be some children approaching. <laughs> so that's great. Congratulations. Okay, yeah, it's, it, I keep saying this. There's forward movement. I just keep seeing like going, 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 nothing really being held back. Things progressing, going ahead, moving ahead. A, lo a very loving scenario that involves the letter L, person, place, or thing, like the person, and R, L and R. Happy is good. Number three, and that's associated with a new beginning. Okay. Beautiful opportunity near the end of the month where we are receiving positive news. This has to do with maybe even with creativity, a new creative project, something new is beginning, maybe even to do with um, a new. Again, addition to the family, a new child, potentially. Letter A, number four, associated with that in some way, shape, or form. And that involves a conclusion, a new idea, a new opportunity as well. Okay. Some of us may be experiencing a, a trip or travel and around the end, latter part of the month. And that is actually part of this whole scenario. Okay. Now, leading into the base much like the rest of the cup a lot of there's it's almost like it's encompassed with surprises a lot of unknowns and yet we kind of know what's happening and yet we don't at the same time a lot of conversations a lot of open communication between different people repeatedly independent thought like thinking differently thinking independently unconditional love support loyalty as well as commitment being present as qualities happiness I mean, it's feeling good. It's looking really good. It just looks like a, a very busy month with retro, like with, with um, introspectiveness, positive movement, abundance and prosperity. I'm just going for what you want to have, essentially. This creativity. Again, by I would say by September, there's this. <laughs> Towards the latter part of the month, they keep seeing like all this, all of this open communication between two individuals, and I keep seeing that repeatedly. Abundance and prosperity. Letter D, person, place, or thing, that involves open communication between two individuals. That very well um, has something to do. Like they're talking about one certain thing, I would say, and it's likely. Um, by a, a, a Zoom call or uh, it's, they're not face to face in the same room, like a long distance conversation, essentially. Abundance and prosperity, partnerships, letter P, possible Scorpio connection with that. Yeah, and some small minor changes. And just to wrap up, again, there may be a house or property connection towards the end of the month heading into September that involves person, place, or thing with the letter J, going for what you want to have and beautiful abundance forming with that. And that results in a new opportunity with open communication, reassurance. Letter C. And interestingly, possibly a departed loved one that's being shown in here in regards to that individual scenario I wish I could give more information. I would say likely a male, but I wish I could give more information regarding that, but I'm not really seeing anything else. But I wanted to say that in case it may make sense with someone watching. And that well would be a good thing for someone to contact you privately if they wanted to. If they want to. a minute left, girl, so. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm I'm just wrapping up now. I'm pretty much done anyway. But if, if yeah, I mean, there's nowhere any pressure. If someone wants to book reading, they're most welcome to, but they're not whatever they like to do. But I just wanted to mention that in case it makes sense to someone. Or resonates with someone. I just wish I had more information that I could share regarding that individual, but I'm not seeing any other defining features, but again, likely a male. Yeah. And again, there's this Scorpio connection, changes, transformation, new beginnings. Okay. 
this independent thought, thinking differently, thinking uniquely, going for what you want to have, I keep saying it. Positive movement, movement forward, not feeling held, not feeling held back. Number three. Oh, we got a smooch. We got a smooch. Oh, that's that we love our smooch. <laughs> it's so funny. I, I had to mute myself quickly because my dog, like, my dog hates when doors are shut. Like, he hates it. And I thought I'd shut the door all the way, but I guess I hadn't because he just busted in. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm like, uh, I'm just like looking I'm like, is there anything else? I'm like, is there anything else, God? Is there anything else? And, oh, there's a smooch. We <laughs> love a good smooch in the hot, you know, cat on the hot, hot tin roof here, the the, uh, the steamy, swelterly August heat of the smooch. Actually, actually, I was I was driving up yesterday, Sunday, to finish my Moon and Key rides with my friend uh, Cindy, and they, I was listening to like the oldie station, which was playing that song, It's Getting Hot in Here, Gonna Take Off All My Clothes. And I was like, that's actually not that sexy here in Georgia because it's so damn hot that literally you're like, I'm just going to take my clothes off and lay here naked. Like, I don't want you touching me. I got boob sweat. Like, I just want to breathe for a moment. But anyway, and I want to bring up how divination works sometimes because a lot of times divination is calling on you to pull up your own intuition and i'll just give you guys an example and this is just something in the reading that resonated with me and it could mean something different for you so she said the number four and then she talked about contemplation with like yoga meditation and then she said someone with the name letter b and w my birthday is on the fourth oh. obviously of february obviously i am um the only female authorized in the state of so yoga is like my job outside of YouTube, YouTube, uh, YouTube, and Bryce Watson. So I, so I'm sitting there thinking, okay, spirit. So you're telling me something is going to happen. Hold on, now I've got to be aware of my in internal guidance, Beautiful. right? So I just wanted to bring that up because that was so clear in her reading for me, and that could mean that number four and that B and that W and it could mean something very different for you. But so when, you, when you're using divination, that's kind of how they do it. They don't tell you the full story, but they kind of give you little nuggets so that you can make better, you can rely more on your intuition and make more um, better choices for yourself. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. And I, I say to my clients, I, I remember even years ago, I, I said, remember one time I was speaking to a client, I said, I feel like one of the things I'm supposed to say the most in this lifetime is do what you feel is right for yourself. Yeah. Even though I'm doing readings, I don't, it's like this is what I'm receiving. Take it for what you will. Leave what you don't, and go ahead and live your life and go home and make dinner. Like, it, like do whatever you need to do for yourself. I'm not going to tell you what to do. And like almost every reading, you've brought up the sign Aries, and I, I've said before, for some reason with Aries, I'm I'm either going to end up in jail or pregnant. Like that's. <laughs> <laughs> So every time you say Aries, I'm like, oh God, I'm either gonna end up in jail or pregnant. Like <laughs> so Sorry, it's in the leaves. <laughs> Take it for what you will, leave what you don't. I know, right. No, it's just I just laugh at that every time it comes up, I'm like, oh god. <laughs> but but uh, it's always guaranteed a good time. <laughs> hey, the end the month ends with a smooch, so a smooch, so but I'm, awesome. an sign. I'm an air sign so aries is fire you're a fight you got your birthday coming up so air and fire it just you know it just air, air and air it just kind of hangs the air and fire it's like so anyway anyway i just every time every time you say that i'm just like oh <laughs> i hear you i hear you no it's like sorry <laughs> the only aries male friend i have currently is mornay but i He's got, he's got his, it's, he's not, he has his partner. So, so it's different. He, he's not into what I have. So he's currently unavailable. But if I were to go, I'm sure we would end up in jail. <laughs> <laughs> and we would be laughing hysterically the whole time. So anyway, anyway, but and you've got your birthday coming up, Sarah. I want to say that again. Um, so you guys make sure to wish Sarah a happy birthday in the comments section because she's got her special i keep telling her once this world stops ending we're gonna go have a party i'm just i'm just like what's gonna happen next i mean i, I love it i was saying with somebody like they literally announced in the united states that aliens are real and nobody gives a shit <laughs> i don't know if you saw that sarah announced it on the news and everyone's like and 
Like nobody yeah. cares. I don't no. think it had the impact. They were, we were like, yeah, we know. And <laughs> like, like um, nobody cares. Everyone's like, it's, whatever. What's for supper? Like what's for whatever. supper? It's not people, surprised about that at all. <laughs> people keep putting for the America, like since they announced it, like, so what happens if the aliens come down and say that they're going to like take over, overthrow our government and take over. And we say, okay, we'll help you. Like, do you think that's going to shock the aliens? And we go, okay, cool. We'll help you. <laughs> and they're like, we're going to come take over. And I was like, yeah, we'll help you. And they're like, wait, wait, wait what? You're supposed to be afraid. <laughs> we're like, Hey, good to see you again. <laughs> we really appreciate you here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you taking over our government. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We've been needing some assistance. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, oh. so yeah, it's uh, maybe, who knows, maybe that smooch is with some intergalactic alien coming to Earth. No, that'd be weird. I've thought about, have you ever thought about that, Sarah? Like what it would be like to be in a relationship with an alien? I have. I mean, as I long too. as- I have I've thought been. about that. Like that'd be kind of weird. Like, I, I don't know, like, well, if they're humanoids, then... But, like, what do you talk about? Like, I'd be, like, so when I was growing up, and we would go to South Carolina, and he'd be like, on my planet, we would ride dolphins. I'm like, on my planet, that means that you were on LSD. If <laughs> you thought you were riding dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hmm. <laughs> well, what, do they have chocolate there? I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's, I, I thought about that because, you know, you talk about, like, we know that we have, our DNA is intergalactic, like, we carry all the strands of all the galaxies, and the Cassiopeians even said that no human being is from planet Earth, like, we're not originally from here, so obviously, at some point, species were mating together, like, obviously, there was some that came to Earth, and then others came later, and, like, a plating came down, and, like, like, what do they, what do they talk, what do they pillow talk about? That's what I want to know, you know, like, when you're laying in bed with your partner, and you're just yeah. shooting the shit? Like, what do you talk about? Like, my boyfriend and I talk about, like, ghost stories and weird stuff like that. But, like, if you're from another planet, like, do they have ghosts on another planet? Like, do they have haunted buildings? on? Another I that's what, like, what do you talk about? Like, Make my life much easier not to have, like, any ghost activity in a house. I mean, hey, I will say that. Listen, if they're, like, on like, Venus, there are no ghosts. I'm, like, let, we're going to your, you're going to your planet then. Like, that sounds nice. I mean, I've had, you know, we both had our share of that kind of, because we, but listen, yeah. listen, dead people don't want to leave this planet. Like they hang out all the time, especially down here in the south, man. You always, you're always gonna have some tenants in your house that aren't paying rent. So, I mean, it's it's so common down here in the south that most people talk to their ghosts. Like it's very normal to walk into someone's house and they're having a conversation. Like, hey, can you leave the TV off for now? I'm, you know, like you know. So, anyway, yeah, but like what. Like, yeah, so, like, you're, if you think about that, like, even if, so I have, in my life, I have dated men from other countries. I've actually dated more men from other countries than I have Americans. And even then, there's, like, differences, but you're still human, right? You're still on the same earth, so you still have a lot of similarities. You still have a lot of things to talk about, and the things that are different, you you enjoy with, about each other. But, like, if it's from another planet... <laughs> what like, do they have fast food? Are they vegetarian? Do they have what? Like... Like, what was like? Like, do they like? Do they even eat? I mean, that's a thing too, right? Like, do I don't know? Or do they? I mean, I mean, I've heard of breatharians. Like, I know what that is, but I mean, I don't know. Do they have chocolate? I mean, do they have doshas <laughs> this clearly, like, Sarah, like, clearly, Sarah likes chocolate. Be <laughs> what's your food like? Do they have chocolate? Before I decide okay. if I move off to your planet, I get there no ghosts. That's a, that's a point, but we got to talk about the food because there's no chocolate. I'm going to just stay here and deal with the ghosts. <laughs> exactly. Or they can come here, deal with the ghosts, and have chocolate. And have chocolate. <laughs> yeah, okay, so up. Actually, I will say, my, my boyfriend and I have been um, looking to move, and you talk about moving a lot. I just want to move to Florida. Like, I don't, I'm just going to be very honest about that. I don't want to be in, I, look, listen, Linda, listen. I'm from this area. Like I grew up, like I'm, I'm from here. So this will always be, it's not like a city that I'm going to leave and like never come back to, you know, like this is home. I've lived everywhere in the world, but this is home. And I just really want to be on the beach. Like I just really want to be like on the beach. But with that being said, the business is here. And so, but we want to leave the place we're in. So we've been looking at other places and then have, or maybe have a place here and move to Florida so that 
we can keep the business here. I don't know. But he really likes these old buildings. And Atlanta's old and it got burnt down. So there's just a lot of shit here that, and I keep saying, I am not moving. If I see a building and it looks fucking haunted, like poltergeist haunted, my ass is not, I don't care if it's totally clean on the inside. I'm not moving there, honey. I'd rather live and go live in these modern condos because the place we live in now is not haunted. It's like the one place I've ever lived where there really is no, I mean, things have come in our apartment before but they're not here. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so, yeah. I mean, we've had demonic stuff happening with all that stuff, but it's nothing permanently here, um, which is fantastic. Yeah. Cause I can actually get peace. But I was like, he's like, no go. And he thinks it's hysterical. He thinks I'm like a, I'm like a toy to him when I get, cause he can see me getting scratched and see, and he's like, that's so fucking cool. I'm like, no, it's not. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not cool. Because <laughs> I can't scratch back. Because like I can't whack it back. Oh, I mean, for years I had. I mean, I've had the tapping. I don't know if anyone else has had the tapping, but like you get spirit tapping. Like I would be. It kind of happened this morning a little bit. I think you're trying to get me up, uh, get going. But like I was, like you hear like. Yeah. And and now I know. Like literally now I know it's my departed loved ones, my spirit team, my my good friends, and they're trying. <laughs> They're just like messing with me now, but like years ago, it was like a like ghostly activity, and I was like, "Oh, it, it, it's yeah." It's you have to learn the difference. We have people entities sit on our bed a lot, and that's happened oh. my whole life. Like ever since I was a kid, you know, when someone sits on the edge of your bed and you feel the yeah. mattress sink, that would happen yes. to me all the time as a kid. And then my boyfriend started noticing it too. Like he'd be like, "Somebody's sitting on our bed," and I was like, "Oh, you you noticed that too." And it's just kind of normal to me because it's happened my whole, but it never scared me. It just felt like someone was sitting there. Um, I've had, I felt um, dogs. I am very, obviously I love dogs and all the dogs I've had in my life. I've felt them like curl up, do that little, you know how they do, they, they do circles yeah. and they flop down. And sometimes I'll think it's Robbie and then there's nothing there. And I'll see Robbie on the other side of the bed. So they don't bother Robbie. I mean, Robbie has gotten upset with some other spirits, but you know, so yeah, it's your loved ones around you, and um, absolutely. Yeah, I remember like no. not long after we moved to where we are now, um, I was laying in bed one night, and it was it was dark late, so it was nighttime, and I was watching YouTube on my phone, and I heard this four times, and at first I was like my stomach, I'm like, am I hungry? I didn't think I was hungry, and then I real because it was coming from like the towards like further away from me, and I realized, oh that's a dog oh and I realized it was the same sound as one of our dogs that had passed away in you know six it was the younger one at the time and that was the same kind of noise that she would make like oh like, pay attention to me I went oh shit and I went, went to sleep right away I'm like don't talk to me don't talk to me I got scared but then I but then afterwards I'm like okay it, it was it was it was her she was coming to say yeah, hi yeah she's saying hi. I just wanted to say that's... hi yeah, and you can um I will say so my sister's dog Mo was uh put down a week ago and he was old he had you know lost control of his bowels and i guess he had dementia which i don't know how they figure that out but oh. i love this dog my sister got this dog when she was like her senior year or junior year of college and then oh Mo, so Mo was in college with her and then Mo went lived in colorado with her that's where he ate a, a full-blown pot cheesecake and was stoned for like three days <laughs> um was with her when she got married uh, was with her through all the births of her children, buying her first home. Like that dog, like really was with her longer than her husband's been with her, honestly, you know, like he was her, as she said, he's her first baby. And so when he passed away for her, I know that was like the hardest decision she had to make. But when I found out, I got really emotional too, because I just, that dog was just such an incredible dog. And I was laying in bed and of course I went like loved on Robbie and just hugged him. And um, I was laying on bed that night and I was kind of like saying a little prayer to Mo and like thanking him for picking us. And all of a sudden I felt that curl and that plop oh, and you? Robbie was on the other side of the bed. And I was like, hi Mo. Like, okay. Hey Mo, oh, you know, oh. like, you don't have to hang out. You can go into the light. You can go in and um, you know, but we love you. And you know, the kids loved him and, you know, just he was acknowledging what you said. Obviously, he just wanted to be there and be with you and say, oh, "Yeah." I mean, those kids, man, that dog was so patient. He let those kids put clothes on him and hats on oh, him. 
And he was older when the kid was he was already older when the kids were both born, so it wasn't like a puppy phase anymore. But yeah, my, my niece Jacqueline is like a dog whisperer. She's uh how old is she? Nine? She's nine years old now. Um and she uh she'll like get in the crate with the dogs and lay with them and yeah. you know and my I will say a funny story about dogs. So my sister and her husband have a younger dog named Reba, who's a golden retriever. And golden retrievers, we grew up with golden retrievers. They are some of the hyper. They are they like hop. They're like kangaroos. They hop. And Reba's like probably like two now, so she's still young. Well, they haven't allowed my niece. So my sister, yeah, she's two now because my sister got Reba right before she found out she was pregnant with my niece May. May was their COVID baby. So my oldest nephew is 10, my oldest niece is nine, and May is two. So Reba and May are the same age. And they mm-hmm. laugh that Reba just made the cut because if my sister had found out she was pregnant first, she probably would have waited to get another dog because puppies are so hard. Yeah. So May is on this napping schedule. So she's on a very different t- schedule daily than the older kids, right? She's almost like an only child, even though she's got two older siblings. Um, and so Reba does, is not allowed upstairs during the day because May takes naps. Well, Reba has figured out, and my sister does have two stairways going up, but somehow she's figured out how to get upstairs without my sister seeing her. And she helps May get out of her crib. Seriously? I don't know how that she's doing it, but my sister will walk into May's bedroom and May will be out of the crib, sitting on the floor, looking at books with Reba just laying beside her. And it's supposed to be nap time. Reba doesn't want to have me to have. Well, I just think they're so connected because they both, my sister got pregnant with May right around the time Reba came in as a tiny puppy into the family. And May is so far removed from her older siblings age wise. Like Charlie and Jacqueline are thickest thieves because they're, what do they call them? Irish twins. Irish twins, I think. Listen, listen, Linda, my sister has not planned any of her kids. Let me tell y'all something. And I told her, I told her that's what she got for marrying an Italian Catholic. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she was warned she married an italian catholic they liked their babies we're we grew up protestant we are very careful we we very much practice birth control but yeah none of my sisters so my sister got my sister it was like two months before her wedding that she found out she was pregnant with my oldest nephew mm-hmm. and um so we're still waiting for the day when charlie does the math And realizes that he was actually at the wedding too. <laughs> and then she, by Charlie's first birthday, my sister was already pregnant with Jacqueline. So, um, and then years later, May. So May, I think May and Reba have a very, are going to have a very. Yeah, very. She's helping, she's already helping her get out of her freaking, May's not even potty trained. And, and the dog's helping her break out of her crib. Like, <laughs> you're like five <laughs> removed <laughs> that's awesome well it sounds like reba and may have the same kind of relationship that mo and your sister had yeah well, yeah it, it sounds like that i mean if she's already helping her get out of her crib now i mean, I, mean just, I, I, I want okay. my sister to put a camera up like put that puppy cam up in the bedroom and just see how this is happening like I how is not, like i want to know now like how does she get the baby out of the crib my she's just i mean a two-year-old it's like like two-year-olds are like drunk adults right they're a two-year-old and a drunk adult there's no difference they, they toddle, they can't walk in a straight line, they shit mm-hmm. their pants, and you can never understand what they're saying, yeah. right? So, I mean, that's the love, I mean, I'm like, how is this dog getting my sister's, getting May out of her crib? It's crazy, it's wild, but it's also, I yeah. I mean, my boyfriend's parents said that they would get go and get him from naps and he would be out of his crib a lot too, but I, he thinks that was just alien abductions. <laughs> Oh, just a, just a, another normal day. <laughs> just another normal day. He had two older sisters. He was the third born as well. But but you know, Todd, he's just like, that's just alien abduction. I was just abducted. <laughs> probably. So, probably. <laughs> probably. I mean, yeah. At this point. The government said they're here. So. The American government admitted it. We're like, duh. We're like, and I don't think that had an impact. Sure. I think they were going to try to start a whole another lockdown, and everyone's like, "Yeah, we know." But have you seen these gas prices? <laughs> well, I hope they have their own supply of uh, fuel because they're paying a lot of money if they come here and try and you know fill up their tanks. 
station. Yeah, it may be more, and I, aliens might be cheaper just to get gas from your planet. That's another question I'd ask. Do you guys have gas? Like, how do you do that? Petrol, what like, is your power source? How do what you, is your do you blow dry your hair? Or do you, like, curl it? Like, I don't know. Did y'all have a revolution? Hair, like, it's like if they have natural curly hair, how how do they like coiffure? Like, do they what product do they? Use? Right. Do did they like? What's your history been like? Did you guys have like an antebellum phase? Like, what? Do you guys fight amongst yourselves like we do on Earth, or is it because we fight amongst ourselves because we're we've not been exposed to you guys before, or do you just fight with other people? Other, I mean, I would have so many questions. I'd be like. The first we got to find about the ghosts. Do you have haunted buildings? <laughs> and chocolate. And we chocolate. Know about the, we know about the haunted houses and chocolate. And once we know that, then we're we're fine. We can deal with all the other details. Yes. Do you have French fries? I am a I'm a I'm love French fries. Do you have French fries on your planet? <laughs> I will add lattes to that list. Do they have French fries, chocolate, and lattes? What if they said they eat through That's osmosis? Enough. Like what if I would do? What if they just like eat through osmosis? Like what if all they do is like touch the food? And that's it. That'd be boring, that would be though. fun. Be like those scratch and sniff stickers we had as kids. Yes. You scratch a banana and you smell it. And then all of a sudden you've got the nutrients. I don't know. Do they make babies like we make babies? I mean, obviously, I guess so. Because that's how we got here. I don't know, guys. Listen. There's so many questions. So many questions. If there is an alien watching... <laughs> Do you have chocolate in haunted houses? <laughs> you can answer in the comment section below, or you can email me at esotericalana at gmail.com. Because <laughs> I would love to talk to you. I'll bring you on the show. <laughs> and do you have chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, well, let us know your thoughts on that. So I love talking with you, Sarah. All of a sudden, it's like, we're, I, don't, I forget we're recording. <laughs> so... <laughs> But it's like it's like all of these normal all the normal conversations all the normal topics of conversation haunted houses and yeah it's yeah it's fun um, this is me on camera and off camera so anyway guys so i've got to hop off soon i we've got a great again have a wonderful tuesday tomorrow is coming up later in the day today i've got some awesome other guests that are new to the channel that are coming on some cult survivors of people you will know who they are. I'm not going to say their name yet, but they're coming on the channel. One I know will be here for multiple episodes prior after the one she's doing with me on Wednesday. So very exciting week for us. But that is why our channel is going to our week here. This channel is going to be a little different this week. I was going to do more deep dives this week, but that will wait for next week because we have basically deep dives with some of these other people about their lives and their experiences. So, um, so yeah, I'm super excited guys. And I'll go check out Sarah's channel and make sure if you want a full booking with her, she's amazing. Go to her website and you can book with her and you book from all over the world, right? you got clients everywhere. Yes. doesn't matter where you are as long as you have an internet connection. And I, maybe I should have asked you, your only language is English. Do you speak any other language? English is my main language. I speak a little bit of a few other languages. Like I speak mean, I speak a little bit of French and I speak a little bit of Scottish Gaelic, truly, but nowhere near fluent. And I guess most people who are watching this speak English fluently anyway. So I was just wondering for our, our group that is from other countries, but if you're, uh, if you're watching this, obviously you speak fluent French. So, so our, not quite. You can tell I've been saying very well in grade 10 I French. Okay, I was thinking French because listen, listen, Linda, um, we had to study French in school and my mom's family, Bryce is my mom's maiden name with an I, it's Bryce, but we've been in the Southeast for so long, it's now we say Bryce, the English adapt adaptation. So my mother's pretty good in French when my aunt still speaks French pretty, pretty well. Um, I love the French language, like you could literally read me your grocery list and I will be in love with you. Like I love the French language. I think it's so beautiful. But it is the damn hardest language to learn because you it don't say half the word. Like you try to read that th that shit, and you're like, "Where is how you?" And I'm sitting here as an English speaker, like trying to sound out the whole word, and it's not that. And I'm like, "Where the fuck's half the you? Why do you have these extra letters? He's <laughs> <laughs> got extra letters here hanging out." <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it sounds beautiful. I mean, I I love I love French. I love the way it sounds. But I I just. I have enough. To, I know enough to have a very, very, very basic conversation, but my English is 
No, that's English it. is my yeah. I if I could do it, if I if I had children, I think I would start them learning a second language. I probably if I had a child, I would probably have them learning French from a very young age. Um, Spanish, I do better with Spanish because there's more Spanish speaking people in this area anyway. So I'm more used. To, I know where you are. You hear more French. We don't hear much French. I mean, if you go to New Orleans, you're going to hear some French, but it's it's Creole. It's not it's not like French like you hear in France or in Canada. It's like a Creole. Um, and so uh, I'm speaking like I'm in India. Bitter. I know some some bitter some some Indian words. Uh, but um, yeah, it's uh, but French is I think for because uh, I took this very interesting class in college where it's about diphthongs of the way that the, the mouth shapes over words. Right. And so like Canadians and Americans have the closest accent, don't yeah. only slight differences. And of course, regionally, we have different accents, in Canada and America regionally, they're different accents, but standard Canadian, standard America, very similar. And right. for us, we use a lot of our the muscles in our mouth. So if you hear like an English person speaking or an Australian speaking or a South African speaking, they have a lazier speech than like an American or a Canadian. So we pronunciate, we use the top of our tongue more. And so truly, when you're learning a language growing up, you're also learning muscle memory of how to okay. say particular words. So yeah. that's why certain languages become easier for people to learn. That's why maybe the Spanish language is easier for an English speaking adult to learn than like the French language, because it's a, the Spanish language hits more, especially Mexican Spanish, which is different from Spain Spanish. Spain, right. Span Spanish, there's more Barcelona, there's more of a list, where in right. Mexico, there's not. Um, right. And so we have learned more of the Mexican Spanish. Um, and it's more so that diphthong is more pronounced than like French. So right. so someone who's like an English, like a British English speaker might understand the, the way that does that makes sense, like the rhythm of the language is just different. Absolutely. Um, and that that's that's shaped by many ways, like the southern accent, the, you know, sugar, the old southern accent, very, very slow, darling. And that, that got that way because it's so hot down here. Mm -hmm. Literally, this is my college class, like, because it's, it was so hot down here in the southeast, people speak slower for that reason. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there's differences in languages everywhere. I mean, I know, like, I'm, I don't claim to be a fluent French speaker at all, but I know there's even differences between Canadian French and France French. There's just a different pronunciation with those, with those languages. Oh, absolutely. As well. yeah. There's, there's, it's like in Canada, I remember hearing one time on YouTube somewhere, like, in, we, like, the Quebec speakers, the French speakers here in Canada, they would say, like, this and that. In France, they'd be like, this and that. Like it's just a, I'm not doing it correctly, but it's more uh, like we would say dis rather than zit. Like it's just a different pronunciation. Well, it's like we say Adidas, and in England they say Adidas. Adidas, yes. We say Adidas. Um, uh, aluminum or aluminium. Al aluminium. We say aluminum. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it cracks me up because even like, what is it? Is it in England that pants? Are like panties, like girls' underwear. Yes, but we okay. say pants are like like shorts or like, jeans, and they would say trousers. Yeah, and to me, trousers is something my grandfather would wear. My grandfather yes. would wear the trousers with that. You know, what is it about when men get older? Like my grand. Let's just talk about my granddad for a second. He came through in the reading with you. Um, my granddaddy Ed. My grandfather was like six five, very tall. Apparently, the ladies thought he was really handsome. I don't know. That's weird because he's my granddad. But, um, you know, but he was like a wild child. Like he got he was in, he got kicked out of school when he was a teenager for drinking whiskey. So he got sent really? to a military school. Yeah, he um, ended up being like an electrical. He's very smart, incredibly intelligent. Was in the military for a while. Like total ball buster. Had a near death experience in his forties. Saw God. Like totally. Like just. Wow. I mean, and even even before he died, he would drink scotch every night, like two glasses of scotch every night, like all the time. Uh -huh. So he was like this cool dude. Like my grandfather was like this badass, like cool dude, mover and shaker. But when he was an old man, those pants came up to he like, what happened? What happened between being like a, a middle aged adult with your pants at your belly button? Then all of a sudden they come up to here. Like, what happens? <laughs> I don't know. That's a, it's a valid question. I, 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 
I, I don't like know. his cool factor went way down. No, I'm just kidding. This was my grandfather when I was like 14 or I think I was like 14. We were, we were, we were at a country club and a country club is like, you guys know it, the, the, the members pay for it. So it's like private property, even though it's technically a business. So I'm like 14 at the time. My grandfather had picked me up from school. I went to a private school. We've talked about that. Sarah did too. And there was a very strict, no tolerancy for alcohol abuse. I was 14 too. Like I probably still play in Barbies at that age. I don't know. Um, and for some reason, I don't remember why I was at the country club. It, we were at the restaurant. It was, a, it was like a school night. Cause I remember doing my homework at the table and it was just my grandfather and me. I don't know where my sister was. I don't know where my cousins were. For some reason, it was just my granddad and me. And the waiter came up to take our order and my grandfather ordered me a drink, like a cocktail. And the waiter looked at my grandfather. My grandfather said, I'm her guardian and it's my responsibility to teach her how to drink responsibly. Bring her. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. And so the waiter said, being a proper Southern man said, yes, sir. And brought me a drink, uh, alcohol. It wasn't beer. It was like vodka mixed drink. And so my grandfather taught me how to drink at, with me at the restaurant. And I'm sure at that restaurant, some of my school administration was around there, but they weren't going to mess with that because I was with my grandfather. Exactly. Back then, parents and grandparents had the authority. Yeah. Um, I remember one time he picked me up from school too, and I was like 14 again. And he drove this big Lincoln. Why do old people drive Lincolns? I don't know, but he had this big old Lincoln. And we were driving, and we pulled into his neighborhood. Horse Leg Creek Road, for those who knew that, know where it is. He pulled the Lincoln over to the side of the road, and I'm sitting in the front seat. And he looks at me, he goes, get out. You're going to drive. You're going to drive us home. Now, we wow. get our learner's permit at 15. When I was a kid, it was at 15. You got your learner's permit. So I didn't even have my learner's permit. And if you're caught driving before then, the state can say, no, you can't get your license until 18. So I was freaking out. I was probably going two miles down that road, holding that steering wheel. And my grandfather sitting beside me decides to take a nap. Are you serious? I drove us the, the whole way home to my grandparents' house and my grandfather. But if we got pulled over, my grandfather would have been like, he probably would have told the officer, I will call your parents. You let us go. She's my granddaughter. I'm teaching her how to drive. <laughs> and that police officer probably would have been like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, Mr. Watson. Thank you. Yes, sir. And you want? Yes. Tell, tell Mrs. Watson I said hello. Yes, sir. We'll see you at church on Sunday. You know. <laughs> so he awesome. commanded. I don't know. Just if, anyway. Wow. I don't know. What I got on. Oh, but God. yeah, that was. But like, his pants, man. By the time he died, his pants were like so far up his torso. I mean, I don't know why that happens with old men. Anyway, but anyway, guys, I know I'm keeping you, Sarah. But I always have so much fun with you guys um, and oh. you, Sarah. I'm mean, gonna say you, Sarah. I'm a little delirious, guys. I've been a little sick this weekend. So. <laughs> We've both been under the weather for a while. So it's fun. Well, it's fun. It's fun. Like, I, I, love how, I always love how conversations go. It's like we end up talking about like random stuff. It's We're awesome. the same age. Sarah and I are the same age. So we cut and but she grew up in Canada. I grew up in Georgia. So we have a lot of similarities because culture was the same pretty much uh, for us. But, you know, being in different countries, all that you see, there's some differences. But um, but yeah. So anyway, guys, if you want to book with Sarah, Aww. She speaks a little, a little French, a little Gaelic. <laughs> Just like, uh, hey, that's as much as I can probably get out. Je ne sais pas. That's good too. Je ne sais pas. Un, deux, trois. We were counting. Un, deux, trois. I can count to ten. I could probably still count to ten. I think, I think I could do more in Spanish. My father speaks fluent Spanish. That's I don't know cool. why. Like, I don't know why that's just, I think he minored in Spanish, actually. Majored in animal science, minored in Spanish. It's always good to have another language, in my opinion, though. I don't know. And He's now I'm thinking about it, I don't know, like, how he learned it. Because no, like, le legit nobody in my family is Spanish. I mean, look at, look, do I look Spanish? Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> second language is always like that's what apparently one of my great aunts used to say all that all the time she's like it never hurts to carry a second language because it does it it gives you opportunity if you ever travel somewhere if you meet someone somewhere at least you can carry on a conversation i know and, my, and that uh, i i yeah my dad i believe my dad majored in animal science minored in spanish and then of course went to he's a veterinarian oh. vet school 
I don't know if I've ever heard him speak Spanish, but I remember just like knowing that as a kid. Oh, I remember how I knew that as a kid. So you remember the movie Apollo 13? Yes. So my dad loved that movie. And so apparently, okay, if there are any kids watching right now, I'm going to tell parents close the ears because I don't want to ruin their childhood. So, or have them leave the room because I believe in the magic of childhood. So one Christmas for stocking stuffers, my dad decided to leave himself the VHS for DVDs of Apollo 13. This is before my sister and I knew that they were Santa Claus. That's why I didn't want your kids to hear. Um, We still believed that a man actually came down the chimney and brought us gifts. So my dad pulls surprise the Apollo 13 VHS out of his stocking. And my sister got so excited because he accidentally got the VHS where there was Spanish dub. Oh, and my, he didn't mean to. But my sister's like, that's so cool. Santa knows he speaks Spanish. Oh, isn't that funny? Oh, that's <laughs> get, precious. But, so I remember him, and they're like, yeah, Santa must know that your dad speaks Spanish. But I don't actually remember ever hearing my dad speak Spanish. That's the funny thing. But I do remember him helping with, with me with my Spanish homework. Um, anyway, so anyway, guys, random things from childhood. So also, I'll tell you one more Christmas story, then I'll, we got a trampoline one Christmas. And the trampolines nice. back in the 90s were death contraptions. This was before they had the tenting up. This is before they were in the ground. They were literally just on. So I think I fell off that trampoline and busted my back like multiple times. And my parents were like, get up, just put some dirt on it and get back on. Well, they set up the trampoline in the middle of the night, you know, because Santa brought it. And my dad apparently did just decided to jump on it. And so that morning, there was a note for us to go look out the window. And so we were looking down at the yard and we saw the trampoline and there are like feet mark on it. And my sister goes, oh, my God, that's the elves. The elves. My parents like, yeah, on... God, that's the elves. They were on the trampoline. Isn't that precious, though? But it's those memories that are just, they're, they're special. Yeah. And my sister, her birthday is Christmas Day. Bless her heart. Aww. She was born on Christmas Day. Bless my heart, too. Listen, I remember that Christmas Day. I walked yeah. out. Saw I had a kid. Remember the kid sisters, the little the dolls, the kid sister. I had a kid yeah. sister in like a Barbie house, and all of a sudden my parents like Bryce, we have to go to the hospital. My sister was two weeks early, so there was no one there to watch me like they had planned, and so I had to go to the hospital with my parents because my sister was being born. And there's a picture somewhere of, and my dad's like six four. My dad's really tall, like like his father. There's a picture somewhere of me on my dad's shoulders. And my dad has that kid sister doll in between his legs. Cause I'd obviously oh. brought it to the hospital with me and we're looking yeah. over, I'm looking over a curtain to watch my sister be born. Oh. Um, because she just came on Christmas and that's a, if anybody has a Christmas birthday, like I feel for you, man, like that's rough. That would be hard. I mean, we've heard like my, one of my great um, uncles had was his, he was born on Christmas day. I think christmas eve christmas day so it was the same thing he's like oh i get like one present yeah people forget they forget my and then my sister's husband her his birthday is the day after so they're literally like the same age he's she's a 25th he's a 26th um and now that they're parents it's like they they focus so much on santa claus and their yeah. kids that yeah it's uh i remember last story guys i know i keep saying last story but um we were little we were really little you'd have birthday parties with your friends you know and sometimes if your birthday fell on like a saturday you could actually have your birthday party on your actual birthday with your friends yes and my sister figured it out that that would never happen for her that she would never be able to have her birthday party with on her actual birthday and she's sitting with my mom and she's crying about my mom goes but you share jesus's birthday and my sister just started crying even harder <laughs> Oh, did she really? That did not make it better. And now we know it's not even Jesus' birthday. So, right. um, yeah. No. Isn't that precious? Oh, poor no, my little sister. Girl. Yeah, she's a cool chick, though. My sister's real laid back. She's an incredible mother. In fact, I am very impressed by the way she mothers her children. Her and her husband are just incredible parents. My step, uh, stepbrother. This is my brother-in-law. He's not my stepbrother. He's my brother-in-law. Um, he's an, just an incredible girl dad. His Jacqueline, oh my, my niece, like 
her dad's like her best friend. She tells him the boy she wants to kiss, who she's got a crush on. I would have never told my dad that shit. <laughs> but isn't that sweet? I mean, that's really cute. Aww. Yeah, he's a great dad for his little girls and for his son too. But I just really admire Steven, my, my brother-in-law's ability to be just a really solid girl dad. And uh, so, yeah. Good to know so. that there's men like that out there. <laughs> good men out there. Yeah, he comes from a good family, good Italian family. Um, so very rare in the South to find Italian families, but my sister found one and she married him. <laughs> she found one and she got one. <laughs> and she got one. And then she got a lot of kids because of it. <laughs> Oh, that's <laughs> so amazing. anyway, guys, I know I've kept you, Sarah, but um, I appreciate oh, you so it. much and I love chatting with you. And you guys, once again, make sure you check out Sarah's channel and uh, book an appointment with Sarah if you would like to um, dive more into what your intuition wants to tell you, what you guys want to tell you. We love a sassy spirit, so maybe spirit can be a little sassy with you privately. <laughs> be sassy. I uh, That was a very pleasant smooch there i've seen a little we love a good smooch at the end i've seen a little bit stronger smooches than that and tealies in all honesty so that one was very that one was not like that one was fine i mean i'm here thinking you could read me your your grocery list in french and i'd give you a smooch so <laughs> it's a very pleasant smooch at the end of the month so someone's well, gonna be happy someone's gonna be happy gonna be very happy just don't end up in jail or pregnant or if Thank you want to be pregnant be pregnant but <laughs> anyway guys all right we love you all and happy lion's gate happy tuesday and yeah. we will talk to you all soon bye everybody bye